Good morning dear friends greetings to you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ welcome to yet another session yet another class of sunday school we are so grateful to the sunday school samajam isn't it even when it's not possible for us to come together in our own churches the sunday school samajam has seen to it that each and every one of us maintains a very close relationship with our lord and master jesus christ we are learning the life and ministry and the teaching of jesus christ and the book that we are using is a book written by our former general secretary of the sunday school reverend dr kk george if you don't have a copy with you i i would request you all to get a copy from the sunday school teachers before we begin shall we bow down our heads for a word of prayer loving heavenly gracious father we thank you for blessing us with abundant blessings we thank you for your life and we thank you for the word of god the bible by which we are able to understand who you are what is the purpose of our life in this world heavenly father as we try to understand you in a more clearer way help us that we may be able to live out the purpose that you intended us to continue to be with each and every one of us in jesus precious name we pray amen before beginning shall i ask you a simple question Why is Jesus important in our life or why should we study about Jesus Christ Well when we look at all the people who have started off a religion or who have started off a movement we can say that Jesus Christ is the only person who claimed to be God C.S. Lewis he was a professor at the Cambridge University he was an agnostic but later turned into a great believer He says that there are many people out there who take or consider Jesus to be a moral teacher but he says that that is that is not at all a good way to look at Jesus Christ He says Jesus Christ can be three things either he can be god or he can be a liar or he can be a lunatic He says that of all the things that has been written of all the sources that we receive from the bible he says that jesus christ claimed to be god and we can we can we can we can understand that he was god or else he was a liar he knew that he was not god but he was lying to his disciples or else cs lewis says that he is absolutely a mad person because no other person can do or say these things but we need to understand jesus claimed to be god and he was god the basic source for us to understand or to get knowledge about who jesus is is the gospels that we have in the bible as you all know we have four gospels the gospel according to saint matthew the gospel according to saint mark the gospel according to saint luke and the gospel according to saint john now when i say that gospels are a source for us to understand the birth life and ministry of jesus christ we need to understand one thing that these are not biographical sketch of jesus this is not a biography of jesus life i i i i i'm 100% sure that this is an incomplete story but when i say incomplete story you need be surprised it is a complete revelation it sure is an incomplete story for the gospel writer john himself said if all the things all the events that jesus did on this earth were to be recorded all the books or all the libraries in this world would not suffice to put all those things written down in the book so this is not a biographical book but this is a book of testimony this is a book of faith wherein the gospel writers who have witnessed jesus who have witnessed the life of jesus they are trying to communicate to the people who this jesus really is now there might be a question that comes to your mind why four different gospel writers wasn't one gospel writer enough why there are four different gospel writers and four different ways to see who jesus is i like to share a small example with you let's consider that i am taking a sunday school class in my church i have few students let the, let us name them as alan jibin thomas rubin and sudeep as i was taking a class we could hear somebody honking 
and I asked the children to go out and see who it is honking. And all the five of them, they went out. As they went out, they saw a person in a beautiful Mercedes Benz car. He got out. And as he got out, they saw that he was wearing expensive clothes. He had a leather bag in his hand and he also had a guitar with him. They all came back and I asked them, what is it that they saw? Alan and George said that they saw a beautiful Benz car. Jibin said he saw a man in expensive clothes. Thomas said that he saw a man with an expensive leather bag. And Sudeep said the new man had a guitar in his hand. Now when we look at the answers, all the answers were right. None of them were wrong, but they gave four different answers according to their perceptions, according to what they felt was the most important in their life. Now when we look at the Gospels also, you need not look at these Gospels as contradictions, but these are different perspectives written by different people. It was written to different audiences and all the different gospel writers saw to it that the need of the audience has to be met. And it was because of that reason we have these different perspectives. But let us thank God. Let us thank God for these different perspectives that we have a larger and a wider picture of who this Jesus is really. What exactly is gospel? Gospel is nothing else but it is the good news of Jesus' life Jesus' ministry, Jesus' death, and Jesus' resurrection. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four, four Gospels that I said. Of these, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are commonly known as the Synoptic Gospels. Now, why are they known as the Synoptic Gospels? Because they are similar in their form. They are similar in their structure. They are similar in the manner that they convey who Jesus is to us. But John is entirely different. Today we will be dealing with these four Gospels the, from the, in the time frame that we have right now it's not possible for us to del in de de it's not possible for us to go into understanding the whole of the Gospel but we will take different dimensions to understand what these Gospel writers are trying to say. To understand what these Gospel writers are trying to say I have divided each Gospels into different segments that is who is the author of the gospel writer, to whom it has been written, which year it was written, what are the noteworthy things that we can find in these gospel writers and what are the only incidences that are written in these gospels. The first gospel to be believed to be written is the gospel according to Saint Mark. Now who wrote the gospel according to Saint Mark? The gospel according to Saint Mark was written by John Mark. But he was not one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. He was, he traveled with Paul in his missionary journey. John Mark wrote, it is believed that this particular book was written in the year from 55 to 65 AD. And it was mainly written to the Gentile Christians in Rome because it explains Jewish customs in detail. Now what was the purpose of this particular gospel? When we read the whole of the gospel, we see that the main purpose of this gospel writer, Saint Mark, was to, to present the work, the teachings and the person of Jesus written in the law. To present the work, teachings and person of Jesus. Now we need to understand, when we look at the gospel according to Saint Mark, Saint Mark doesn't mention the infensive narrative. We are, we, are not to be, we are not shown the birth narratives in the gospel according to Saint Mark because he was more interested in showing to the world the person, work and teachings of Jesus. The noteworthy thing that we can find in this particular gospel is that this begins with the preaching of John the Baptist and this book records more miracles than all the other gospels. This gospel according to Saint Mark records more miracles than Matthew, Luke and John. And most noteworthy thing is that this is the smallest gospel that we find when we look at all the four gospels. This is the shortest gospel and the few incidents that are found only in this gospel, one of them is the story of the growing sea, the other is Jesus healing the blind man at Bethsaida. So this is a short brief 
understanding of what the gospel according to saint mark is when we come to understand the gospel according to saint matthew we see that the author of this particular gospel is matthew who was one of the disciples of jesus matthew who was formerly a tax collector and he traveled with jesus is what we can understand as we read the gospel it is said or it is believed to be written in, in between 60 to 68 ad and what was the purpose of this particular book when we read the gospel according to saint matthew we see that there was only one purpose of this particular gospel and that is to portray or to show to the world that jesus is the messiah he is the anointed one he is the eternal king and to whom was it written it was written specifically to the jews because it emphasizes the fulfillment of prophecy lots of old testament references can be found in the gospel according to saint matthew few noteworthy thing that we can find in this particular gospel is that it begins with the genealogy it begins with the genealogy of jesus wherein it shows that jesus was the descendant of abraham and of david my dear friends this was very much important for the jews we will deal with it in the next chapter when we understand the birth of jesus how it happened what all things happened in the birth but this was the genealogy was very much important for the jews and it also emphasized the fulfillment of prophecy jesus as the messiah few incidences that are found only in this particular gospel it is the visit of the wise men or the magi the escape to the egypt the death of Judas, it is not to be found in any other gospel and the dream of Pontius Pilate's wife. These are few things that are, that are, that are exclusively found only in the gospel according to St. Matthew. So we have seen the gospel according to St. Mark. We have seen the gospel according to St. Matthew. And as we move forward, looking at the gospel according to St. Luke, we see that the author of the gospel according to St. Luke is Luke. Now, just as we saw in the gospel according to saint mark luke is also not one of the 12 disciples of jesus luke is a gentile author and he accompanied paul and he was a doctor by profession it was written around ad 60 and it was written specifically to theophilus but it was generally written to the gentiles what was the purpose of this particular gospel it was to present an accurate account of the life of Christ and present Christ as a perfect human and savior. When we read the gospel according to St. Luke, we can see that the gospel writer beautifully portrays Jesus as a perfect human and savior for the whole of mankind. There are more parables that are to be found in the gospel according to St. Luke. All the famous parables that we see, especially the three lost things that we see, the lost coin, the lost sheep and the lost son, which, is, which, is a sto which are the parables which we learn from the very beginning of the Sunday school is found in this particular gospel. Noteworthy thing, this is the longest gospels to be found. This gospel is the longest one of all the four and this particular gospel the gospel writer we see notes jesus's high regard for women no other gospels we see or the, uh, we, we are not to be we are not shown the high regard that jesus had for the women disciples but luke makes it a point to bring it out and we can see that the mentioning of mary elizabeth anna joanna widow of nine and we see that Jesus is portrayed more as the son of man than son of God. He was portrayed as the perfect human and the perfect savior as I said before. Few events and incidents that are found only in this gospel is the events from Jesus childhood wherein he is taken to the temple how he is with the parents no other gospel writers write those things john in prison the miraculous catch of fish the story of zacchaeus the trial before herod and some of jesus's last words from the cross it is mentioned only in the gospel according to saint luke coming to the last gospel the gospel according to saint john when we look at the author we come to know that it was written by john the apostle who was one of the disciples of jesus he was the son of Zebedee, brother of James. He was a disciple whom Jesus loved a lot. 
It was written around 85 to 90 AD. And one thing that we need to understand is that this particular gospel was written after the destruction of Jerusalem and before the exile, before John's exile to the island of Patmos. To whom was it written? It was written to the new Christians, both the Jews and the Gentiles. And what was the purpose? It was to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Son of God and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. One noteworthy thing that we find is there are no miracles in this particular gospel. There are only signs that we see in this particular gospel. This gospel begins in the same manner as the book of Genesis begins. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now why is it? It is just to show that Jesus is eternal. He was there from the very beginning and he continues to be till the end of the ages. To find those things that are there only in this particular gospel, my dear friends, as I said, this gospel is entirely different from all the three gospels. So there are many things, most of the things recorded are something new because it doesn't follow the pattern of the synoptic gospel writers. Four gospels give us a picture of who Jesus is. Reading just one gospel writer is not enough because we will not have the complete picture of who Jesus is. So to understand who Jesus is, Jesus being the son of God, Jesus being the son of man, the way he came down to this earth to rescue us and when we analyze, go through all of these gospel writers, we can come to say that he was neither a liar, he was neither a lunatic, but he was really God. And I pray that we may all rise up to that level in understanding who Jesus really is. I request you all to go through all the Gospels. Read the Gospels before you sleep so that you will be in more closer relationship with the Lord. And I believe that these lessons will help us to be firm in our faith no matter what the situations or the surroundings are. Can we all close our eyes for a word of prayer? Loving Heavenly Gracious Father, we once again thank you for this beautiful day wherein, O Lord, we have once again recollected who you are. We thank you for the gospel writers, for the experiences that they had, for the spirit that you showered upon them. So that, O Lord, by reading, we are able to understand, we are, ha we are able to have a closer look at who you really are. Help us to grow more firmly and more dearly in you. Continue to bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my dear children. See you next week.